Welcome to Wine Time Mysteries, where we talk about true crime, the paranormal, mysteries, and cryptozoology with a dash of comedy. This podcast contains adult themes and is intended for mature audiences only. Don't forget to click follow and tickle that little notification bell. Now, find a comfy spot. We're about to start today's episode. Hello and welcome back to another episode. Welcome back, Marines. I don't know what that fucking was. Welcome but I back. I liked it. She was just going <laughs> to sing on your ways. <laughs> Tonight, dear Mung Beans, I'm going to talk to you about Donald Henry Gaskins. I was like, Trump. <laughs> just to know. Anytime oh, Donald. Donald. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't sound anything like Trump. That's why you got this look, because I'm like, in my brain, Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. Sorry, what was his full name again? Donald? Henry. Yeah. Gaskins. Oh, haven't heard of this boy. Neither had I until last night. So I was like, you know what? Cool. Let's do <laughs> Oh, a fucking dollar. Let's fucking die. <laughs> Born Donald Henry Parrott Jr. in Florence County, South Carolina on March 13th, 1933. Uh, uh-huh. Do you know what he is? Other than a, a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot his birthday already. March 13th. March 13th. Pie. See? You're getting better. I'm getting there. I didn't see a lot of information about his upbringing other than him being neglected by his mother, abused by a male relative. They didn't go into the details of what abuse took place, but I don't think you really need to use your imagination to figure that out. Him drinking kerosene when he was one, which gave him convulsions, which he had up until he was three years old, and a reference to him being beaten by his stepfather. But it was not clear if this was supposed to be some form of discipline or if it was abuse. And I know people might argue that in either case it is abuse, but we also need to recognize that these were different times. And it doesn't mean that I condone the action. I just feel I needed to make the distinction. Yeah. Because it was kind of like when I was younger, if we did something remarkably bad, we would get a hiding, Mm. but it's nowhere near as bad as it sounds yeah really and i know in my mom's generation like it was like corporal punishment oh yeah so getting a beating was kind of a form of discipline and they didn't know any better Mm. but again it doesn't make it right yeah interesting having said that it seems that donald was a bad seed from the very beginning which could have been brought on by little man syndrome Mm. and i know that it's not like a real condition just something that people use to make fun of short kings But anyway, he was so small that he was nicknamed Pee Wee. Oh. Yeah. And as an adult, he would stand five foot four. Oh. In height. As a full grown man. He was in the small. uh, Yeah, small boy. mm. Did he shove old cans in his fucking shoes? No. Oh, see? At least he took that on his shoulder. Oh, on his oh, head. Yeah. <laughs> they were short. <laughs> By 11, Donald would form one part of a trio that would engage in violent crime sprees where they would commit burglaries, assaults, and even gang rapes together. That's nice. Just hanging out with the boys. Like, fucking hell. But then, like... <laughs> I'm not reasoning the behavior. No, right, no, no, no. But no. it's kind of like... Is it similar to those other things where a lot of serial killers or murderers in general had some type of incident that took place as a kid? Yeah. Normally getting bonked on the head. Yeah. But was his, like, come to Jesus moment drinking kerosene? Yeah, maybe. And it's like, right, well, life of crime for me. Yeah. Burn him. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Caught me off guard for a yeah. second. Oh. Yeah. At 13, he would be convicted for assault, and the long and the short of it being that a young female caught him breaking into her family home. So he hit her in the head with an axe. Oh. Yeah. Surprise, Shorto! Oh. You know, that's like one of my other top Ooh. is an axe to the head. Ooh. But. I don't think she died, and I also don't know what part of the axe hit her. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it was the... I would like to assume that... Well, I would like to assume he would never do that. Yeah. But I would like to assume that it was, like, the blunt end. Yeah. I was like, is it the stabby boy or the wooden boy or the back end of the... Yeah, I don't think... It would have been hard for him to whack her with the handle. (laughs) It wouldn't make sense. I like how I don't even... I'm just like, nah, fucking whack her. 
Yeah. Yeah, cut himself up. And that's 13. Yeah, when he was 13. In 1946, he was sentenced to five years in a reform school, the South Carolina Industrial School for White Boys. That's the name of the school. It literally has what for white boys. Yeah, because they had segregation back then, remember? So yeah. black blacks weren't allowed. Yeah, I didn't think they really need to do. Yes, you fucking do. Fucking history, <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't realize it was actually like writing. Yeah. White, like oh, I thought it was kidding? just. Uh, no, they would have water fountains which would say whites only. They would have um, like barbers and stuff that would say whites only on it. I there need would to be, educate myself. <laughs> there would be some places that would allow blacks to go there but it was a separate part that was um like cordoned off from the white people and would have blacks entrance so they literally would not allow like people of color to enter through those areas yeah that's so strange you didn't know that yeah like this is gonna sound bad but i guess like my white girl knowledge was of it was just so verbalized that that it was was just assumed not uh yeah Mm. like it was just canon yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why there was a lot of trouble because you'd have people who, I guess it was harder for women because re- if a man really needs to go, he can just pull it out and piss in a bush. Yeah. But the toilets were also for whites only as well. So you could go to a place as a black woman. You could be employed at a place as a black woman. Obviously, unfortunately, your working conditions aren't going to be as good as the white people around you. Yeah. Um, but you don't have any toilets that you're actually allowed to use on site because you can get in trouble for using them because they're for white people only. Oh, I fucking hate white people. Like, that was obviously very separate from the actual topic, but... Yeah, I need to educate myself. Yeah, so the industrial school for white boys, where he would get more than he bargained for, whereby he would be raped regularly by the other inmates. I'm kind of like, well, you rape people too, dude. So. Yeah, that's why I was like, <laughs> I don't know what it sounds about. I'm like, well, you kind of mm. did a bit of gang raping yourself, buddy. Yeah, I had to remind myself of that song when I was writing it, because I was like, serves you right, dude. But then it's like, they say two wrongs don't make a right, don't make a right. But you rape someone, dude, so. As you can imagine, even bad people don't like being on the receiving end of what they quite happily and willingly do to others. So he escaped and ran away. While he was on the outside, he would get married to a fellow 13-year-old. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so pause. Because who in their right mind is letting two 13-year-olds get married? That is entirely too young. But perhaps it was also kind of normal back then. Did they get some land or something in return? There are two 13-year-olds. <laughs> What land did this come to? We're merging our families together with my lollipop ring and your lollipop ring. It is not clear why. Clear. 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 (laughs) I'm trying to figure it out in my head as I go. How do you say it? Clear. 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 Is that what I'm saying? (laughs) I just. Clear. I like because. You add, like, a bogan one in there, the normal pronunciation, and then, like, clear. Because I'm trying to figure clear. it out. Yeah, no, clear. I like it. That's why I love clear. it. Clear. Clear. It's like clear. when I don't know, I'm like, clear, clear, clear. Well, because it's even when I say it right, it sounds wrong in my head. No. Say it again. Clear. It is not clear why, but he voluntarily returned to the reform school where he stayed until his release in 1951. I guess prison was better than being married. Yeah. I was like, uh, huh? Well, she was hardly going to peg him, wasn't she? Ooh. I mean, maybe she did, I don't know. Well, they're 13. They shouldn't have been having sex anyway. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Now a man at 18, he had his mind made up and he was going to turn over a whole new leaf, getting a job at a tobacco plantation. Oh, the tobaccos. Yeah, no. That was short-lived as he would be arrested less than two years later for attacking a teenage girl with a hammer. Uh Uh-huh. See, his ego was so fragile that he thought that she had insulted him, so he swung on her. Short man syndrome. Uh I wasn't kidding when I said short man syndrome. Yeah. Like, I perceive, whoops, I perceive that you have just insulted me, ma'am, so I'm going to smack you in the head with a hammer. Haven't you heard of glove slap? Seems fair. 
It's glove slap. Glove slap, baby, baby glove slap. slap. But like, is he just carrying a hammer around? Well, I think this was while he was working on the plantation. Okay, so, so it wasn't I think just hammer to him. Not well. I mean, I also don't know what he hammer to him. Did you just say hammer to him? I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> You are feral. You are. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You are feral. I don't think she died, so it's fine. She's probably dead now, but I don't think she died then. This picture of her shot, man. You're terrible, Muriel. I'm sorry. This attack landed him back in custody, though this time it was the South Carolina Penitentiary, where he would serve six years, his sentence being extended by another three years after killing a fellow inmate. That escalated rather quickly. It really did, but he also claimed that it was just from self-defense, but apparently there was this game or challenge or right i don't really know what you call it where you get notoriety for taking down the most feared person in prison Mm. and that's kind of like what he did and the whole thing is dumb and regardless of the reason it was at the very least considered involuntary manslaughter because it was in defense but someone still died from whatever but all he got was three years for that Uh. which does not make sense Mm. This, however, was apparently the turning point for him, where he would become the aggressor and no longer the victim. It's always a good turning point, right? Yeah. In 1955, his wife filed for divorce and he flipped his freaking lid, breaking out of prison and hiding in a garbage truck. But you know what they say? Trash is as trash does. Because he's trash and he hid in a garbage truck like trash. Yeah. Yeah. In my head, I'm like, I'm trash, Lee. (laughs) Oh my god. Are you okay? I don't know. <laughs> I'm trash today. Oh dear. I'm like, we just do what we do. Be trash. They will never find me. And they didn't. Isn't that the funny part? <laughs> they didn't find him in the trash, no. Oh. While he was on the outs, he remarried again. And I don't know how this was all happening because he was like a wanted convict. And who has the time to get remarried when you're... A wanted convict on the run. I like. I genuinely don't understand. But don't you worry, your pretty little head, because this only lasted two weeks. Okay, good. And then he got a job in a traveling carnival. Shortly thereafter, meeting a lady named Betty Gates. Oh, Betty Gates. Betty Gates. You call me Betty. I'm better. My name's a better. <laughs> better guts. <laughs> what this. is wrong with us? Now this is wild. Donald and Betty went to Tennessee to bail out her brother who was also incarcerated. And he left the hotel that they were staying at for a little bit. Again, I don't know how they're doing this. He is a convict, but whatever. But when he got back to the room... He saw that Betty was with her brother, only he wasn't actually her brother. He was her husband, and he had also recently escaped from prison. Okay. I was about to say, you shut your mouth right there. I wasn't (laughs) incesting you again. It's okay. I was like, you shut your damn mouth. You don't talk about that anyhow. Yeah, I could have worded it being like, and then they walked in and she saw him fucking her brother. Yeah. But it wasn't even her brother anyway. It what was a smart husband. little letter. Well, is it though? Because like she roped a convicted murderer now. Yeah. Into helping her break her husband out, but lying to her about it. Is that smart? Well, is he a convicted murderer? My convicted murderer is bigger than your convicted murderer. Well, also I can't imagine unless she had a thing for like small men. They didn't go into details about how tall her husband was. Huh. So he could have been I'm being... fucking ballsy, hey. Betty had balls. Better balls. So maybe she told her I'm better goats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt, the police had tracked the husband down, which obviously led them to Donald, and it wouldn't take long for them to figure out who he was, and they returned him to prison. <laughs> you don't even go here. I just got a lot of feelings. But I just like, was there wanted posters? You know what I mean? You would assume that there would have been 
there probably would have been things on the news being yeah. like this person's wanted in this area. It just sounds like escaped. he's like, I'm going to fucking get married and I'm just going over here and doing this. It's like that. he didn't care. Yeah. And he literally kind of got away with that. For some reason, he still managed to make parole in 1961, but he probably shouldn't have been let out until at least 1962 at the earliest. And it turns out that not only do they not give more time for escaping prison, it looks like they actually take some time off, which didn't really make sense to me because this man is clearly dangerous and given his rap sheet yeah, she'll be right they shouldn't have but there we go again right yeah fucking hell finally a free man you would assume that he would like to keep it that way but unfortunately it didn't take him long to going back to getting up to no good not only did he start burglarizing and selling the stolen goods he also raped a 12 year old which saw donald being back in custody again but he would escape while waiting sentencing he was eventually tracked down in georgia where he was arrested and sentenced to eight years and that eight years was for the rape of the 12 year old he made parole again by 1968, serving just under seven years for the eight-year sentence. And can we have one more round of applause for the U.S. legal system, please? Like, yeah, you, like, do they not, like, it's like they don't pull out the full file. It's not like they had ease of access to that kind of stuff, but also, like, at the same time... Was there not laws back then for repeat offenders? Because I remember there was a case over here where it was like they didn't have it like it took a little while for them to if you're a repeat offender you would assume that if you're being processed through the same courts repeatedly yeah that the sentencing would get more severe each time so they would add things on however the things that he was getting booked for were different crimes yeah so it's not like mind you in saying that when he was mind you he was also a minor when he had his first offense. Yeah. So that was probably stricken from the record. Maybe, I don't know if they did that back then for people under age. System's fucked. Yeah, the system is not good. Donald would claim his first murder outside of prison, which was in 1969, less than a year after his release, when he picked up a hitchhiker, tortured and murdered her before sinking her body in a swamp. There would be many hitchhikers that he claimed to have picked up and dispatched of, but none had names. He said that it was both men and women, and it was purely for the pleasure of claiming a kill. He would apparently look at doing this approximately once every six weeks. I don't know why this time frame was the one he chose, but then there was also something else that he said in like a different statement where it was on the 10th of every calendar month, he would claim a victim oh, shit. or something like that. So it was different. Yeah. Huh. Um, I was like, maybe that's when it wore off, but yeah, fuck if he's picking to a date. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, he said that he would keep them alive for as long as he could to maximize the experience. He also said that he would use different methods to kill them from stabbing, suffocation, mutilation, and cannibalizing them. While he made these claims, they were never corroborated and became just that, claims. Mm. So he was never charged for those either. Donald wasn't all talk though, as he would be found guilty for 15 confirmed victims. Fuck. In 1970, he beat his niece, Janice Kirby, 15, and her friend, Patricia Ann Allsbrook, 17, to death, claiming that it was because he was sick of their drug use. Uh, but other people said that it was actually a failed sexual assault. Uh, fuck it out. Your niece? Yeah. In 1971, he poisoned Martha Ann Dix, but the exact reason is unclear. He claimed that she was the one providing his niece with the drugs, but apparently it happened because she told him that she was prego with his child. Oh. So he killed her. Yeah. Because that's... That's what you do. Or not do. Not only was this guy a rapey murderer, but he was also like a super racist. In 1973, he raped Doreen Hope Dempsey, 22, before drowning her and her two-year-old daughter, Robin Michelle Dempsey. He had befriended her years prior and became enraged when he discovered that she was pregnant with her second biracial child. The father was an African-American. So, I can't use the actual terms yeah. because it's the N-word. Yeah. But it was N-word lover is what they would refer to people who didn't 
it's just yeah. treat people by color mm. in that kind of way. They're in word lovers. Uh, disgusting. And they wouldn't stand for it, the racist. So, That's so gross. Because of that, he killed her. And apparently, the pond he drowned both her and her daughter in was in his backyard. Fucking hell. In 1974, he shot his friend, Johnny Sellers, 32, in the back of the head before stabbing Johnny's ex-girlfriend, Jessie Ruth Judy, 22, to death because he asked for some money that he was owed from a sale of a stolen boat. Even though the money wasn't really either of theirs, he wasn't willing to give, like, give his share of the money, so instead he just killed him. It's a fucking little bitch. In 1975, he was hired to murder Silas Barnwell Yates, 45, and did so in February of that year by slitting his throat. He was paid a total of $1,500 for his service. The requestee was Yates' ex-girlfriend. So she also got arrested, obvi. Good. In April, he shot and killed Diane Bellamy Neely, 25, because she threatened to report to the police that Donald allowed underage teenagers to have sex in his house, which apparently he had been allowing for quite some time. He also shot her boyfriend, Avery Leroy Howard, 34, because he asked to borrow some money to pay for some legal fees. This guy has some anger issues. Yeah, I mean, he could have just said no. Yeah. Can I please borrow some money? Boom. Yeah. Like, he literally is, like, anger fueled. Personified, yeah. Yeah. That same year, he killed Kim Gelkins, 13, and she was stabbed to death to keep her from telling the police that Donald had moved unlawfully. And he also did it because I think he was worried that she was going to tell the police about being sexually assaulted by him and his friends. So that was maybe a way to silence her. In October, Dennis Bellamy, 27, and John Henry Knight, 15, half-brothers of the Lady Diane that I mentioned before. Yeah. They were shot in the head moments apart. Again, he owned money to the boys, but instead of paying them, decided to kill them. Yeah, he's got no chill. (laughs) He has no chill. No, he's just, yeah. Yeah, because he would have made an agreement to pay a certain amount based on the money made from the stolen goods. I believe in this case it was weapons. Mm. But instead of making good on that... It's wild because, like, from me, what it sounds like is his... He's getting his fix of raping, murdering, but then he's also just fucking murdering just because they pissed him off. So it's like literally two getting his rocks off and then fucking just killing someone because they've... One doesn't negate the other because perhaps he was also getting his rocks off. Yeah, from... At the same time, only the other ones were planned. I don't know if these ones were planned until the situation happened. He's like, fuck it, just kill him. Yeah. But either way, I think he would have received pleasure from it. It's wild. That same year in 1975, someone would snitch on Donald and provide the police with information pertaining to the death of Diane Dempsey. A Walker Neely, one of Donald's criminal associates, confessed to the police that Donald had told him about the many people he had killed and even took them to the place where Donald claimed to have disposed of his victims. And they uncovered eight bodies and Donald was arrested on the 14th of November that same year. That's a lot of people to die. And, like, not... You know what I mean? Like, the way that you get caught is because someone snitched on you? Well, I believe that there were missing posters up for these people. Yeah. As well. But the way for it to be found is your friend. Yeah. Because Neely was his criminal accomplice. Huh. So he had done some things with him, but I don't think he ever murdered yeah. anybody. And I, I don't know as well if maybe he came forward to snitch, I guess. Yeah. To get a plea deal. Yeah. Maybe if I tell you about this stuff, like you'll go easy on me or me. Mm. I'll be immune. He was tried for murder on May 24th, 1976 and was found guilty and sentenced four days later, receiving the death penalty. But apparently the death penalty was unconstitutional and he was commuted to life in prison. But in 1982, that would all change when he would claim his final victim, fellow inmate Rudolf Tyner, 23, by blowing him up with C4 in a makeshift bomb built into a radio. This guy has no fucking chill. No what chill. What the fuck? Yeah. I'm like, how did he kill someone else who's in prison? Yeah. So what happened was Rudolf 
was in prison. He was also a, a death row inmate. Mm-hmm. And he was in prison because he was found guilty of the murder of, I believe it was like two shopkeepers, like a husband and wife. Yeah. Apparently it was taking too long. So their surviving son got in contact with Donald in prison mm. and also somehow smuggled in the parts that he would need to use to rig up oh, this bomb. Shit. Yeah. So that he would kill him because it was taking too long and he wanted him dead for the death of his parents. So he basically worked with Donald from the outside to Mm. get that arranged. So again, it was like another kill for hire situation. But listen, I'm against murder, but that's very creative. Yeah, no, that is very... Yeah. Apparently it was meant to be like a two-way talk system. Um, Sounds a little bit gay, but whatever. (laughs) And he was like, you need to put it against your ear. Let me know when it's against your ear. And he had the cord in his room. So when he put it against his ear, apparently the last thing that he would have heard was Donald laughing before he plugged it in and blew him up. Fucking hell. Twisted, That is fucking crafty, though. Yeah. Like, fuck me. Ten points to Slytherin. Yeah, shit. Mm-hmm. This put the death sentence back on the table, and on September 6, 1991, at 1.01 a.m., Donald's final words were, I'll let my lawyers talk to me. I'm ready to go. Before he was electrocuted to death. What? Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. I'll let my lawyers talk to me. Are you going to kill them as well? Like, have you rigged their stuff? They're going to talk to you in hell? What the fuck? Mm. But uh, strangely enough as well, apparently, like, a few short hours before his death. He had also tried to, like, unalive himself by slitting his wrists. I fucking hate when they, like, bitch out. You just had to wait a little bit longer and they were gonna do it for you anyway. Yeah. Why are you gonna... It doesn't make sense. But they obviously took no pity on him because some people might assume that you do that because then you need medical Mm. attention which will stay the the death a little bit longer. In this case, they're like, no, strap him up. We're good to go. Yeah, no, we're good. (laughs) Mm. But that, dear mung beans, was today's case on Donald Gaskins. Fuck me. What a wild ride. What a piece of shit. Well, I enjoyed that. I didn't enjoy it, but, like, that was wild and crazy and I liked it. Thank you. I'm glad. But I mean, I'm also worried that you liked it, but, like, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed yourself, you know? Yeah. You can never tell what means, though. You can't. You fucking can't. You can't. And on that yeah. note, goodbye.